Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Ah! Shit in my ass. We are back, folks. We're here. We're queer. We're a little under the weather. Joe's under the wallpaper. Uh, the, the, something happened in the studio. I think all the yelling from the guy's divorce on the phone call knocked the wallpaper off the walls. It looks like Katrina in here. What I, happened, Joe? I know. Joe there's Rabbit? like shit. There's like dust, and it's. I think it's dried glue, which feels very similar to cum. Frankly. Yeah. Let's be honest. I think Shelby's living in here on the weekends, <laughs> and uh, maybe fucking prostitutes. Who knows? <clears throat> it's all shedding on me. Yeah. Not good. It's like he planned this to get back at you. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. We just got here. It's Monday afternoon. Ah, uh, oh, this. I, don't know is what a, to do. I hope this isn't a metaphor for the uh, the podcast. Is are we crumbling? Is it all falling? Well, I just like uh, Rome. I don't mind if, but it's all it's all pipes. It's all pipes. It's just jizzing on me. Yeah, it's all in my hair. Oh, uh, yeah. I worked yeah. so hard to not be a dandruff guy, and now I got lice. Yeah, yeah. Well, nice to meet you. I got dandruff. It's no joke. That head and shoulders doesn't work. You got to get the tea gel. Oh, uh, Neutrogena? Yeah. Oh, it smells like a power plant. That shit's the worst. It does. But I'll tell you, you know, with the with the dandruff, they, they always tell you, keep rinse and repeat. That's a marketing scam. You got to just not wash. I never wash. I was just in Aruba. I swam in the Caribbean every day. I didn't, sh- didn't shampoo once. Finally, I shampooed yesterday because it was getting a little old. Yeah, well, we've been uh, conditioned to, uh, to to wash our hair too much. You need some sebum. You need that natural queef all in there. It's good for you. Like the, the black folk, they got that natural glow. and They pick it up. Right. I never uh, do any... Shampooing. I think I'm too far the other direction. I uh-huh. go like uh, you know six, seven months, maybe a year without shampooing. It looks good. You got a shine, a sheen. Well, this is freshly pooed. Oh shit, Charlie Sheen. Uh, yeah. How come? I think I feel like spinach should have this for a slogan. Power plant. Ooh, I like it. Do I a like whole it. thing. Have a little, you know, uh, the power plant. Yeah. Spinach. I mean, hey, a power know, plant. You don't want to get Chernobyl in there, but uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Power plant, because there's superfood, right. but power plant is better. Power plant is fun, but I think it maybe has a negative connotation, a power right. plant. Nuclear, anal. Shitty job, yeah, right. whatever, but... I gotta say, I, I really am under the weather. I'm under the the, the shit. Because I feel like shit. I got back from vacation. What's well, a work trip? But vacation, really. I got back from Aruba Uh-oh. with a sinus infection, and I, I'm I'm dying. Maybe not infection, but whatever. What's her name? Casey Anthony, Amanda Smart. No, Vandersloot. Vandersloot and Natalie Holloway, Holloway was the victim. Yes, Holloway. Yes, yes. Hol- they don't like to talk about it. Keep the Holloway clear. But yeah, yeah, that really hurt uh, tourism over there. Hurt the tourism, and then they're like, there's 900 women missing a day in Florida. We had one woman a day. Everybody was looking, but Nancy Grace went down there, oh. and, and she shit all over the place. They hate Nancy Grace. You Grace can't bring up Grace. Fire. Yeah, Grace, say Grace. Princess Grace. I was uh, at a place. I had a sleepover when I was a kid, and I, I slept at my friend's house. And we had to have dinner together, and the mom made me say grace. I come from a bunch of atheists, a bunch of booze bags, and uh, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. What is grace? Like, what is the actual grace when Thank they say that? Thank you, our Father, for the food, for I have sinned, to each his own, the kingdom come, the potatoes, we, we appreciate it, and then you do the sign of uh, Allah. So when you say grace, there's not an actual thing you say. It just means say something. I think right? there is a thing, kind of like the national anthem. Like, there's a set couple of bars, but it's mostly just thanking. So if someone says, say grace... And I say, hey, this is thing. I appreciate the food. I'm like, very excited, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna shove it in my ass and eat it until I come. Yeah, is that grace or is that not grace? I think that counts. It's graceful. You put your own spin on it. So you there's know? no lyrics to grace. I think there's like two lines you got to get in there. 
Chuck, anything? I think uh, I think you're supposed to say whatever you want, but they have like a default that yes. you can fall back on if you're like, oh, I don't want to think about a thing right, right now. And right. You're like, you're like, oh, thank you, God, for the yeah, for the steak, for the whatever. food, yeah. rub it up, yeah. rub. Thanks for the grub. Yeah, Th- that yeah, counts. That's, that's grace. That's a grace. That's but a if good you say thing. that in a place that has doily place settings and dresses, they're not going to be happy about that. Yeah, doily rules. But I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, I think they don't want you doing a. If you do a little uh, rub a dub dub, put the food in my tub. It's they. I think they get annoyed. It's no good. Yeah, they throw a roll at you or whatever the hell it is. I think there is one that's like the Our Father, like the way you were saying it. I think there is one like that. There's something. There's yeah. something. But I had to say it. And I panicked, and I. I think I. Th- I did like a full Kramer. I went went hard and on the N word or whatever. But uh, I blew it. What are you gonna do? <clears throat> but yeah, I feel like shit. I got the the reflux, the stuffed nose, everything. Yeah. And uh, hopefully it's not COVID. I just had COVID two and a half months ago. It's so probably not. And uh, ah, even if it fine. is, well, COVID's like, over. Yeah, it feels like even if you get it, it feels like I, I had COVID. It was it was better than this. Really? I don't know. It was I up there. Well, for me, COVID was just bodily. You know, I was just a big pile of diarrhea. I was uh, hurting. I was weak. This is just. I got the mucous membrane. Insane in the membrane. And uh, I, I'm just right there. Just yeah. pain right in the sinus dick. Yeah, I feel stuff. I mean, Chuck's a goner. There's no way he's going to get out of this alive. This oh, room yeah. is 13 feet by 6 feet. But yeah, so I'm stuffed. I'm runny. I'm tired. I'm achy. So I, I'm just, I got shit to contribute, but I got a bunch of stuff. I was in Aruba for a week. I was in Fort Worth for two days. Lay it on me, fatty. My yeah. father's gay. I, I don't know. I might have to take a nap. I got a wallpaper falling on me. I'm all fucked up here. I know. You're like a first responder here. That's the, the second tower to fall. This is the first. We lost the sign, even. I know. I just but. hate the white dust. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's 9-11. I'm telling you. Don't tell Ran is easy, but uh, isn't it uh, weird that um, I watched the Batman movie? Oh, eight wow. hours. Yeah, it's live. I watched it twice. You loved it. Loved it. He's so sad now. I like. I like. Uh, pow, bam, whap. You know. I, I was thinking it will get to a point where they do a spoofy Batman with the tiny ears. It has to It'll come be back. Silly. Let me ask you this: Has anyone ever done this bit? Because I think this is funny. In the movie, the guy gets this phone call. He says, "It's for you." Shouldn't Batman hold the phone up here? <laughs> Has that been done? That's gold. <laughs> That's great. And then he's like this. Hello? What? I like uh, it. Uh, he's got to hold the phone. I mean, I'm like, that's that's pure gold. They, they and should, would, it would add some levity to the I film. I love it. I love They need levity. But yeah. here's the thing. He should have a bat phone that's about nine inches long. Yes. That would be fun, too. I got one of those. Oh, In yeah. my pants. <laughs> yeah. Pow, wow, bang. Oh, yeah. Zoom. But, um... I had this thing. Have you ever had this? And, and, and I have a full Batman discussion on Joe and Rana on podcast. But do you ever watch a movie? This happens a lot. I'm, I'm by myself. I'm in Fort Worth. The new Batman's out. I go, I'll go see a Batman. So I wake up. There's a 1030 show. You got to go see it at 8 a.m. You got to because it's four and a half days oh, long. I'll miss the show. Yeah. If I go to a two, I'll be late for my own gig. Right. So I get tickets for the 1030 a.m. I wake up. I go for a run. I do my push-ups. I jerk off. Put some things in my ass to see if they fit. Sure. I go to Starbucks. I have my tea, my bagel. I do a little writing. I get all this stuff done at 1020. I'm going to see Batman. I already got all my shit done. There you go. 1030 a.m. Batman. It's quiet there. There's like two other people. And so I'm by myself. I got my feet up. I got M&M's and, and candy or whatever, and, and popcorn. You earned it because you did your work. I earned it. I woke up so early. I'm like, this is great. And by the time I leave, it'll only be 145. There it is. So I'm in there, and I go, and Batman comes out, and he's swinging and punching, and Paul Dano, he kind of looks like me. He's like, he does, Wayne. And I'm going, this is great. Yeah. Fantastic. I love Batman. I like Batman, too. He's cute, but I don't like he's so bummed out. But let me finish oh, here. Sorry, so I get sorry. out. I haven't I, seen it also. I text everybody I've ever met. I go, dude, the new Batman is fly. It's it's banging. I'm trying yeah. to do the new slang. It's you know? lit. It's lit. It's fire. I'm, uh, you know, it's it's hot. It's retarded. Whatever people are saying. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm texting everybody. They go, wow, I can't wait. And I go, that's fun. Good stuff. Then I'm like... You know, and of course, there's a couple. I, mean, I write. There's a couple things I don't like. I didn't like this. I didn't like this. But overall, I loved it. Okay. Now keep in mind, I'm in Fort Worth alone, suicidal. That helps. Shit gig, shit club, shit everything. Nice club. Sorry, I want to work there still. But hyenas, hyenas. Yeah, yeah. It's tough, but it was fun. It's good. I'm, I'm grateful. They threw me bonuses. I, I enjoy working there. It's not a shit club. Good, good town. Good people out there. So. 
I do the thing, and I'm like, yeah, that was weird. That part's up, and I love that, and I love that. I'm Batman. I'm a Batman guy. Yeah. Then I go down to Aruba, and I'll fill in some details here. I'm down in Aruba for seven days. And, Jesus. You know, every day it's 80 degrees it's pro- or 90 degrees and, and breezy. You're swimming in the ocean, the whole thing. And we have a bunch of nights off, so I go, we should go see the Batman. Again? Well, this is with Sarah, who hasn't seen it, and, and Aruba Ray, who hasn't seen it. I know, but now you're de- devoting 19 hours of your life to this bat. Six hours. A day of school, six and a half. All right, all right. That's a lot of bat. What are we, in Wuhan? I mean, Dave Chappelle does eight-hour sets every night. Yeah, well, nobody's a fan of that either. Well. Uh, that also makes me sad and depressed. But keep going. Anyways, the referring to yourself as the goat feels weird. I don't like the goat or the bat. I don't, I don't care for goat. Just say the greatest, the best, whatever. Too much goat out there. I know, and you get. Uh, I hate goats. I hate Fuck goat goats. Cheese. I like sheep. We were in Wales. There's sheep everywhere. They're a lot of fun. But sheep is an insult. That sheep is bad. Sheep. I know, but Thanks. sheep are beautiful. They're fluffy. They're fluffy. They're puffy. They're friendly. We they wear they're, them. There's packs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you could you could fuck either. Yeah, you can fuck anything, really. That's true. You can fuck this wallpaper. I would like to. <laughs> but anyway, like got to the walls already. So I say to I say to Sarah and Ray, let's let's go see it. It'll be fun, and uh, they're like, "Oh, it's nice out every day." But it, it ends up raining that day, mm. which never rains in Aruba. Plus, don't you feel like when you're in a place that's sunny and eighty every day, you're like, "Well, there's no shortage of sun." It's not like we have to like capture this sunny day, right? Sunny. But a three hour movie is actually a nice break from pure sun for twelve sure, hours. Sure, you don't want to get cancer out here. Exactly. So I go. We'll go to the movies. So we go over the movie. The four, we're going to the 440 showing. And by the time we get out, it'll be dinner time. It'll be nice. Nice. So I go online to buy the tickets. My wife handles the ticket money. And <laughs> you, can't, <laughs> you can't click on it. So I'm like, it must be sold out. Ah. It's Batman. People are going to the movies in Aruba? Well, that's what Sarah said. And I go, well, listen, we're, we're, there's seven hotels all down the street. Uh, it's the one rainy day, and it's the biggest movie on the planet. Makes sense. Adds up. But you know me. I don't trust the online stuff because I'm an old soul, you see. Yes, yes. Soul. <laughs> Big coat. So <laughs> I say, let me just walk right over there. I'll go check it out. If I can get tickets, I'll get the tickets. Check it out. Tickets. So I walk over there. I walk up to the guy, and the guy's a Rubian, or Ruben, and he says, uh, Good sandwich. I go, I go, I go well, my Sarah and I tried to make a sandwich out of him. He was cute, but uh, he didn't go for it. I see. Neither did she, so I just jerked off watching them buy sure. tickets. But I say, Hey, is there anything left for bat? I know it's the biggest movie on the planet. I know there's a bunch of hotels. Everyone's got kids. It's a rainy day. You got any tickets? Could you squeeze us in for an old buccaneer? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> he says, and the guy goes, tickets, all, plenty of tickets. And he like turns the screen. He's like, you can pick your thing. And he goes, it's all available. There's zero tickets sold. I thought it was sold out. Zero tickets sold. Have you ever done that? Where you make a case for why it's sold out, and you're like, this is why it's sold out. Yes. And you get there, and he's like, there's not a single ticket. He's right. like, nobody's coming here. Interesting. So you were way off. Way off. But you were right not to trust. I was right not to trust. Yes, so but, good. You saw so, the movie like, 11 times. So the three of us had the thing to ourselves. Now, I've seen the movie, and I'm like, it's pretty good. You guys are going to like Uh-oh. it. Like, you must like it. It's too, I've seen it twice. I know where this is going. And now I'm watching the movie. Now I got some buddies. I've seen all the tricks. And the first five minutes, I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Aha. Uh-huh. That was stupid. They then wooed he makes you. Fun. Then you I were make wooed. Fun. I start making fun. He makes fun. Then we're all just shitting on it. And before you know it, I'm like, this is the worst movie I've ever seen in my That's life. That's how it happens. They got me because they... I was alone in Fort Worth. Yeah, you were lonely. You were scared. You were a bat. If you're going to submit a movie to win an Oscar, send the voters to Fort Worth. Aha, uh-huh, that's Make the focus Make them watch it alone. Yes. yes. I mean, my movie comes out 4th of July. I'm going to play it exclusively in Fort Worth. I love it. That's a great idea. Fort Worth, Fort Wayne, Fort Hood. Fort Knox. Ah. Uh-huh. That's the tough one. That's right. All right, good luck getting in there. Yeah, her pussy was like Fort Knox or whatever. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. All right, well, so now the movie's bad, so I shouldn't see it? Well, I think it's somewhere in between. Well, the first time I was, I wasn't like, this is the bad. I was like, I liked it. It was fun. It's good, but it's got some problems, but it's got some fun stuff. All right, well, I'll fly to Fort Worth if I'm going to see it, because I'd like to have a good time. It's Fort Worth the trip. It's it's (laughs) tricky, but uh, anyways, that was it. But it was quite fun to see it by ourselves, because you can talk and be silly and yell. Yeah. You know, he went to sleep. She's like, I hate this. Fort Worth. uh, That was fun. Fortnite.
Uh, All right. Well, <clears throat> I still would like to see it, but uh, I have to clear my schedule, apparently. And there's some annoying wokenessy things in oh, there, no. of course. you got to squeeze it in there. Why do they squeeze? Too they much of the squeeze. squeezing. A lot of squeeze. I think the public's sick of it. Oh, of course. But... That's how it goes. Things have to fizzle, and then we go the other way. So right, I think right now we're on the down slope. Whoa, whoa, whoa. S- slippery slope. Easy. Tippy toe. But all right. <laughs> well, okay, so it sounds pretty good. And uh, did Sarah like it? Yeah, she hated it. We all hated it. We just One of, one <laughs> of our guys it. threw gum at it. I think they, I think that a lot of the stuff was good. I thought the car chase was like one of the best car chases I've seen in like a mainstream movie in a long time. Yeah, uh, there was some fun. There yeah, was some was real fun. There's some real well shot. nonsense though. I mean, I, you know, spoiler alert. Oh, uh, no, no. S- no spoiler. I won't spoil, but there's a thing. I've already heard there's a car chase. There's a one thing in the movie where literally a guy, a bad guy, tells, you know, Batman, uh, Bruce Wayne, hey, this is who killed your dad. And Bruce Wayne's like, What? Oh, I'm upset about this. And the very next scene, they don't pad it. It just goes to the next scene, and a guy's like, that's not who killed your dad. Yeah. This guy killed your dad. And he's like, what? And it just makes him look like a gullible idiot. Right. And it's like a, a plot twist followed by, you can't have a plot twist followed by a plot twist in the next scene. Too much twist. It's, twi- it's twist and turn. Yeah, yeah I, I think that that was the problem. I think that the cinematography was awesome, and the tone was awesome, but there was a lot of plot stuff that was a little weird. It was a little silly, but uh, it's fun. I don't know. It's amazing they can get that wrong. They got 38 million people working on this movie. It's a giant crew, all these board members and writers and all that, and they can still fuck that up. Yeah, well, it happens. It happens. The human flaw. Human beings are flawed. That's two in a row I've made. So if you see a bad movie around July, give them a little slack. They tried their best. It's oh. not easy to write oh, a movie, you, you know. Maybe, maybe he's never acted before. Maybe yes. he's never wrote a movie before. Go to Fort Worth. Oh, God, it's a piece of shit. We made a piece of shit. Ah, it's so bad. I heard good things I from can't a couple watch of Jews it. who saw it. Who saw it? Tim Dillon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he said it was good. Okay, okay. He enjoyed it. He liked it. But he's it. also an Irish drunk, so maybe it hit home. Yeah, that's true. That's what it's about. Aha. Uh-huh. Oh, spoiler. Tim said it, but he was also like, it's not funny, but it's a drama. Oh, it's a drama. Yeah. There you oh, go. Uh, Tim hates me. Oh, God. No, he said he liked it. And it ain't three hours, I'll tell you that. No, nice and quick. 48 minutes total. Yes. <laughs> and unfortunately, your dad is still alive, unlike Batman's. Whoa. Oh, God. <laughs> the weird thing is, Batman's, It's they keep updating it. So Batman's parents died in, like, 2008. Oh, He's weird. Like, it's like, wait, <laughs> they died they in Katrina? Died. They died. <laughs> Literally, it's like they were shot in 2001. I'm like, he died in Tower 2. I know. You, you know we're getting old because everything I watch now is like back in 1994. I'm like, that was, a, that, was a fun, that was a fun time. I was a kid. You know, like I watched the Pamela and Tommy Lee thing. Have you seen that? No, I haven't watched it. It's silly. It's campy. It's over the top. But it's fun. But everything's like in 94. And they're like, Wi-Fi? Wow. And they have to go to the, the, the library to find some uh, Google shit to f- see the website. You know, and it's like, all right, we get it. They're making a million jokes about VCRs and whatnot, but uh, it's fun. I enjoyed it. You know what movie I saw recently that I was surprised to find is quite campy? Schindler's List. Oh, a lot of camps. Camp. Yeah. Hello, that's folks. Good. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? 9-11. Oh, how about this? I, I worked with Tony V, comedy legend, Boston comedy Funny legend. Guy. And... This is so crazy, because when I started doing comedy, I was 18 years old, so everybody seemed ancient. Right. And I found out this weekend that Tony V was 46 when I met him. My wife is 44. Oh, wow. I thought Tony V was like an old man when I sure. met him. Because when you're 18, you meet a 46-year-old guy, 48-year-old guy, you think he's like an old man. Right. And he had some gray, and he was like he had been around for 20 years. But now I look back... There are people in their 40s. I, I, thought, I thought they were 110 I know. And now. Now that you're, what, 39? Yeah. Yeah, now they <sighs> you feel the same age almost. They'll, he'll, he's like, what, 62? Yes. But you're like, yeah, we're the same. Yes, and these young comics that are starting now, they're 19. They think I'm like 60. I know. I know. It's weird. I can't get it up. It's weird. I got gray hair. We're old. Oh, We've done God. it all. They're looking at us going, I'd like to get to that career. I know. And Maybe like, I, I want to shoot myself. Exactly. Content king. But Ugh, the movie's bad. They're I remaking White Men Can't Jump, too. Really? Like, what are we doing? We got enough. It's called Black Men Can Do Anything. Yes. There you go. <laughs> and are they really too. remaking it? 
They're remaking it with some rappers as Woody, and I, I got to tell you, I rewatched it out of anger. Like, I'm watching the original. Oh, it's, it's so good. Fantastic. It's so funny. Wesley Snipes is unreal. Like, he deserves an Oscar for that role. Woody killed it. It's so many great jokes in it. And it's one of my favorite scripts ever. Yeah, Rosie Perez is hilarious. The whole thing's great, and it ain't uh, it ain't woke. I'll tell you that. Like they go in, like black people, you just want to look good. You don't care about winning, and white people, you just you're all stiff. Right. It's great, but they're gonna ruin it. Yeah, it's fantastic. Great movie, and you see Rosie's tit, big yeah, nipple, great tits. massive nipple. It's bigger than this cup. Underrated can, Puerto Rican cans, and. But you know they're going to have the rosy character. She's going to come in and dunk at the end. You know It's going to be one of those things. We should be paid the same. Boom. Oh, 360 dunk. The Stokies. Yeah. Somebody's going to be trans. It'll be fun. Ah, what can you do? Trans women can't vote. I don't know. That's the new title. But either way, we've been everywhere. You've been, every, you've been in Aruba for seven days. I was in Aruba for seven, Fort Worth for two, and uh, my mother's ass for half a day. I feel like after Fort Worth, you need seven of Aruba. Right. You know, it's a cleanse. Well, I've just been happy to be out of the city. I, I, yeah. I, I, the, the train is its just like it's like a Batman movie out there. It is, People yeah. People got their faces painted. They're taking shits. They're lighting cigarettes. <laughs> I, I, I'm terrified. I know. Um, was he the Penguin or the Riddler? There's th- th- that's the other problem. There's 18 villains. This is my other thing with the movie. Just have one villain. And you don't have to do the big end of the world crazy. Just have it be... There's a serial killer on the loose, the Riddler, and he's like, woo Riddler, yeah. and then you get him, and that's it. Yeah. They got three mobsters, the penguins in there, Jeez. then there's another mob guy, and, and I don't need the mob. It's no. a comic book. Yes. It should be the fruitcake, and he comes in yes. and blows you and throws grapes at you <laughs> right. or It's Andy Dick, basically. <laughs> 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 Go kill Andy Dick, call it a day. Plus, you're using up the Penguin. You could have had another movie later with the Penguin. Well, and the other thing is with all these is it's all it's a franchise. So you have to set everything up. So the first movie, ah, just setting up the Penguin. Right. So we he can be a meme later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. half lock. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> penguin. Uh, with this in this global warming, I don't know. Hey, hey, folks, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Join the action of the biggest college basketball tournament of the year with DraftKings Sportsbook. New customers bet $5 on any team to win and get $200 in free bets if they do. If they win, you win. If Sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, you can still join the college hoops action with DraftKings Pools. Everyone can play free. Pools are March long. Pools all March long for a shot at a share of over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in prizes. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code Tuesdays. Bet five dollars on any college hoops team to win and get two hundred dollars in free bets if they do. If they win, you win with promo code Tuesdays this week at DraftKings Sportsbook. 20 to 1 and over. Restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Hey there, folks. Tuesdays with Stories is also, of course, sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. A lot of us will drop anything to go help someone we care about. Well, go out of your way to treat yourself better, too. How often do you guys get yourselves the treatment you need? Not enough, I say. We've got to invest in ourselves, too. For me, working out or going to therapy is an investment in myself. This month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to take care of your most important relationships, the one you have with yourself. It's like that Whitney Houston song. Here, here. I believe the children are all super. Whatever happened to her? I go to therapy once a week. Alan is back in person, Ooh-wee. by the way, but I got a stuffy nose, so I can't go see him. So I might go check out BetterHelp. Yes. I go to therapy. I love therapy. It's changed my whole life. You are your greatest asset, so invest the time and effort into yourself like you do for other people. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, that's for sure. And you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Great movie. Invention of the Buddy Cop film. Mm. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. Tuesdays with Stories is sponsored by BetterHelp, and listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays. That's B E 
T T E R H E L P dot com slash Tuesdays. Can't find a better help. Back to the show. Woo. I, I got a lot to, to, yeah, to break down some. here. I haven't seen you since 75. All right. So first things first, I had a but, big excursion cooking. Let me map this out for you. Please. Fly to San Diego. Ooh. Gigs in La Jolla all weekend. Sold wow. out. Already sold out. Can't wait. You know, it's been snowing jizz. It's been flurrying here. So we're going to sunny San Diego. Can't wait. It ain't L.A. L.A.'s full of cunts and hobos. San Diego is just the same weather, the same hot people, and no queefs. Mm-hmm. So I love San Diego. And that Have you been to that La Jolla store? No. It's magic, baby. And they're asking for you. No kidding. Yeah, there's a buzz. But I'll ask my agent. No, no, they don't like him. <laughs> but we'll get you in. And it's just like... I. I, you know, you get these emails before a club, like, hey, can I open? Hey, you're doing that show? Can I open? I get the most for this. Wow. Because they just, like, everybody wants to do that room. It's a hot room. That's a new thing, by the way. When we were coming up, you had to email the club and say, hey, please work me. Now you email the comedian. I know. I'm the, like, I never yet met you. The club used to pass you. Now the comic passes you. Right. It's a, it's a new phenomenon. So, uh, great weekend. I had Alec Parent. Uh, hosting, he killed it. I had my boy Zoltan, he's a San Diego legend. Check out his special Modern Mail on YouTube. And we just had a great time tweaking bits, working out, ate all the fucking burritos. I got 18 different plates. You got to try Don Carlos. You got to try the uh, taco shop, yada, yada. Great weekend. Now, here's the clinker. We got eight shows sold out. I'm texting with Ari because we're going skiing mm-hmm. the next following week. And Ari's like, well, we'll see you Sunday. We got three shows at Wise Guys. Those shows are going to sell out. They're already sold out, and they're going to pay for the whole ski trip. Wow. So I go, oh, great. So I'm looking at my schedule. I'm on the beach. I got sunglasses on. And I'm like, I got two shows in La Jolla on Sunday. Oh, boy. I got three shows in Wise Guys on Sunday. Classic Norman. Classic. I need an assistant. You got problems. I'm a mess. I'm not autistic. By the way, did you get the assistant guy? He emailed me. Really? The guy, Alec Baldwin's assistant. Oh, he did email me. You got to get on that guy. He sounds amazing. I love that guy. I'm worried. Best email I've ever got. I want to get this guy. And I go, I can't afford it. You got to talk to Marcus. And he said, well, he ignored me and he's gay. I like it. I'm just worried of getting in bed with these queefs. And then you owe them a bunch of money. Then they steal money. They know your secrets. Then they write a tell-all book about your asshole. I'm scared. You're not in bed. He works for you. That's bad. Are you in bed with your manager? Are you in bed with Chuck? Are you in bed with Shelby? Yes. Are you in bed with me? Yeah, we're bo- we're boning. No we're in bed. bed. No bed. We got bunk beds. It's bad. He's trying to get in bed. Yes. He's, he he's takes a me bed photos bunk. of his bed, but unsolicited, I might add. But Yeah, with a couple of uh, bunnies in there. Those are some real hot ladies. I don't know about bunnies. Hey, hey, well, hey. Well, maybe more of a, a hair. Hey, we got some listeners. Let's, uh, let's keep it moving. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> First time Chuck's been quiet. But all right, so... Uh, <laughs> um, so now I'm freaking out. So Ari's mad. You know, you, you get a fun-loving Ari, you can put a, a, a shoehorn up Ari's dick hole. He doesn't care. He throws a cup of piss at you. It's all fun and games. But he's mad, Ari. Yeah. He's like, you fucked us. You're, you're like one of the big names on the Wise Guys show in Utah. And if you don't do these shows, now you're not contributing to the trip, and you're just going to show up on Monday. We're going to be on the slopes already. The whole thing's ruined. Right. So, Again with the slopes. Easy with the slurs. For God's uh, sake. Sorry. The, the, the mountain, ski hills. The hills. The bunny hop. Whatever it's called. The black diamond. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Oh, Jesus. Negro diamond. Oh, oh God. Shit. The, the Tuskegee. Whatever it is. So I go, I don't know what to do here. I, I love the uh, sold out shows, but then we also got wise guys. Right. I can't just cancel two. That's 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 a 250 seater. That's 500 people. You got to be mean to. Yes. So I really do some contemplating, and my agents are going. They all, everybody hates Ari in the business. You know? Of course, <laughs> they all hate Ari. He's a, he's a, a nincompoop. He's a troublemaker. <laughs> and I go, uh, I can't cancel these shows, Ari. And he's like, Wow, here's the clinker. They work for you. Cancel these shows. You promised me we we booked this shit in November. I was like, He's right. But then I go back to the agent. And I'm like, Fuck that guy. He dosed Bert. He's Jewish. We hate him. And I'm like, yeah. it's like the golf club episode in Seinfeld. What do you mean? The golf club. Go back. Turn back. No, keep going. Yes. He's yes. chasing the car or the golf clubs. So I said, okay, how about this? I'll call the La Jolla club. And you know I hate confrontation. I hate all this. So I call the club. I go around the management. I go oh, around geez. the agent. We'll cut I, the bike in half. Yes. And I go, I promise my friend 
I'm going with other friends. I can't let them down. If I don't show up to Wise Guys, they're going to feel gypped. These are like $60 tickets. Sorry. You know, he hiked it up because we got a uh-huh. big house. Sure. So I call the owner of the club. I'm terrified. He's an owner. He's a businessman, Jerry. Men with jobs. I know. And I go, hey, uh, I think I got to cancel Sunday. And he goes, dude, you're killing me here. And I'm like, well, think of it like this. What if I got a movie? I just had to go. And he's like, I get that, but you didn't get a movie. And I'm like, I know, but this happens. He's like, it happens, but you're fucking me. And I'm like, oh, how about this? It's my worst nightmare. I know. I live like this. I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm shaking. I'm on the beach shaking. I got the white nose. I got the, the, the big silver thing, you know? And I'm like, uh, I got to do it. I'm sorry. And he's like, all right, well, might not have you at the club again. And I was oh, like, God. oh, shit. So and you're telling me you got to get me in? You're banned. <laughs> I'm banned. I know. <laughs> I don't want to be associated with I you. I know. It's, it's bad. <laughs> bad news. You know me. So I go, how about this, sloppy jalopy? I'm coming back into L.A. in June. I'll fly down to San Diego first. I'll make up two shows for you, and then I'll go to L.A. And he said, you got yourself a deal. Oh, so boy. I gave him a makeup date. I changed my flight. We did all the shows. We had a great time. I pissed off the entire staff because they're like, we wanted to work Sunday, make some money, but sorry. <sighs> and I flew to, flew to uh, well, Utah. And what about all these Padres that were getting ready to see you on I Sunday know. night? You fucked them, and now they can't go in June because they got a wedding. And boy, I'll tell you, my uh, my DM <laughs> blew up. I don't oh, know what sound geez. that was. I queefed. But my DMs blew up like... What happened on Sunday? Are you okay? What the fuck? Are you, you big time on us? Who do you think you are? You think you're hot shit? What do you? What do you? Are you a cool guy now? You cancel guy? I'm like, no, I fucked up. So ah, jeez. But we made it to Utah. It was one of those. Ari, hats off to the guy. Yamaka's off to him because he juggled like seven comedians coming together in Utah. He got the house. The house is unreal. It was in Park City, up on a hill, hot tub, wow. the whole thing. I have photos. I'll send it to the Patreon, and he got the shows cooking. We did a 3 p.m., a 7 p.m., an 8 p.m. He 3 got a, p.m.? Yeah, he got a big Suburban. He got sushi delivered. Some sushi guy was a fan. He came and catered the whole green room. Ryan Hamilton showed up. The wow. shows were amazing. Oh. And then we jumped in the Suburban, and we drove to Park City and got hammered. Woo-wee! We did shrooms, and we skied. We oh, skied that's all fun. week. Now, who's the group? Take us through the group. Tell we, me the group. Hell of a group. Big group. Hate group, Ari Shafir, Shane Gillis, uh, O'Neill. Uh, Who's O'Neill? Ryan O'Neill? Ryan O'Neill okay. of, uh, he's got that podcast. David and O'Neill, da- Dale and O'Neill. It's pretty big. Goliath. Give give that a goog. Ran Azizi, Ian Fidance, Sean Patton. Wow. So a lot of, a lot of fun whites. Group. And... You know, just had a blast. I mean, skiing all day, making dinner at night, laughing, music playing. Oh, we did shrooms, we drink, we watch bad movies, making fun of the movies, throwing stuff at the screen. Then you jump in the hot tub, have a couple of tequilas, laugh, shit on comics. So many inside jokes. You know, it was one of those things, too. We had a fire going. Then Shane would do one of these to Ari. Now they're wrestling on the floor. Oh, we're we're hooting and hollering, throwing popcorn at them and pissing on them. Just a fun time. Jumping in the snow, rolling around, and getting back in the hot tub. So just one night of shows? Yes. One night. First night, you knock it out. It was a, it was a little bit of a, a feat. But, uh, yeah, you know, we just had a great, it was all sold out. Boom, the club, Keith, the club owner, he loved it. Love Keith. And then we just drove out after. We we paid our dues, we got our checks, and we still made money on top of it. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, that's just great. Me God and Shane uh, pocketing White Claws and drinking them on the ski lift on the gondola. So you're like, oh, we're coming up to the end. So you had to chug it, then you had to hold on to the can, ski down with the can, throw it away. Uh, and then the last night we went to a big steak dinner. Wow, big apple pie. Yeah, you don't want to know what that bill was. We did a little credit card roulette. I already had to pick it up. And, oh, jeez. Uh, good times. Just uh, just one of those magical couple days. That is fun. That is good. And that's where you, were you there the whole week? Or where were you elsewhere? Well, we did Sunday at Wise Guys. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Flew out Wednesday on a red eye to Tampa. Ah, oh, so there was another city. Yes. I was thinking you were in Salt Lake this whole time. No, no, no. I, I, I would have died. I mean, just I'm sick because of that trip. And then right. the red eye doesn't help either. These red eyes are the biggest misconception in the business. Red eye's tough. There's no 
Good time to fly. We had it yesterday. We came back. We had like a three thirty flight, and then you get in at eight thirty. So you lose your day. Yeah. But you have a little bit of morning. But if you have the early flight, you get a day where you're going. But then you have to get up early. Right. It's right. Tricky. It's tricky. And then you know, hey, it's five hour flight to Tampa. I'll get five hours of sleep. I'll land in Tampa, and then I'll get another couple hours, and I'll be fresh as a daisy. And then you get fifteen minutes of sleep. I was in the middle seat, and then. Uh, you land in Tampa at 7 a.m., and the room's not ready till 3. Come on with the middle seat. You make me crazy I every know. time. You trigger I me. Book it too You're late. a millionaire. I Buy need a assistant. seat, you fucking idiot. I need an assistant. It's God not damn it. funny anymore. I it's know. angering. It's livid. It was not, it's not funny you, for me either. You I'm sitting there like too this. much like money a, to sit in the middle. That doesn't G- make sense. John Goodman and Chris Farley on either end. I'm fucking freaking out here. I, it's I, a nightmare. I mean, you got to be either. If, if you're either lying or you're an idiot. I can't <laughs> tell what's going on here. I'm sending you a photo. I booked the flight. I forget about it. Then the ticket goes beep, 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 beep. Beep, beep, and I go, ooh, 11B. That doesn't sound <laughs> good. <laughs> oh, God. You're making 40000 a day, and you're uh, sitting in the nah, middle. It's all God. pipes. It's all pipes. Oh, my Christ. <laughs> Get an assistant, an agent, a manager, a sister, something. I mean, uh, my sister. Christ. Yeah, well. You know, sometimes sisters help something. I don't know. Sure. That sister, just seemed like a word. Sister, sister act. Sister act. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Sister club. Either way, sister, sister. By the Boosted way, sister. how about this? Speaking of middle seats, yesterday... We're flying back from Aruba. Aruba Ray books the flight. Best guy in the world. Love him. Great guy. But for some reason, he bought the flight 17 months ago. He gets Sarah a window and me an aisle uh, in a three-seat row. He's see, like, that way the seat between you is open. I'm like, yeah, in October it's open. Not right. in February. We're at the height of Aruba season. Yes. He's like, no, nah, it'll be open. I'm like, why would that happen? Why would you think that? Yeah. So then she has the window, there's an open seat, and then me in the aisle. Uh-oh. And I was like, well, just sit in the middle, and then we'll give someone the window, because they'll prefer the window. Ah. I need the aisle, because I piss 48 times, I drink sure. 17 cups of tea, and I'm nervous. But now you put her in the middle of the east. But she, uh, the middle's not bad if you know the person next to you. Ah, that helps, because you get some arm rest you can, freedom. You can debate the L- I'll take the arm for now, and you can lean, you can snuggle, and you can chat. And she's a little frail lady. Yes, exactly. So she sits... In the window, I sit in the aisle. That middle's open. We're like maybe it'll be open. Lady comes, hot Asian lady. Wow! And I go, Stop Asian hate. I stand up so she can go in. But I go, hey, would you prefer the window? Because my wife is is in the window and I'm in the aisle. And she goes, hmm. Which right away I'm like, what? I'm helping you out, lady. And she goes, well, I'll take the aisle. Oh, <laughs> I go, now she's negotiating. I go, I go, no, no, I'm the aisle. I need the aisle. And then Sarah pipes in. She's like, he's got a bladder thing. And I'm like, well, I drink a lot of coffee. Yeah. And uh, you know, I don't say tea because then it's a whole thing. I'm right. like a British fag. So I say, no, I drink they, a lot of They like of, tea, though. I drink a lot of coffee. Oh, yeah, Asians. They love tea. I think yeah. they invented it, to be, to be quite I honest. I believe so. I think China. I think Japan. Oh, really? Uh-oh. It feels Ryan O'Neill's podcast, the Sleeping at Last podcast. Thank you. Well, there's the China Green Tips. I think it's an old China, because China's been around longer. Maybe Didn't you're right. did China own Japan at some point, Ooh. or was it vice versa? There's something with Mao. All right, yeah. invented tea. And the Xi. Ah, uh, you might be right. The Xi, I think. China. She is. Yeah, emperor go. Shen Nung. All oh, right. Shen Nung. He's a good emperor. Yeah, oh, he's the best. Guy. He struck back that one time. <laughs> yes. Was it the empire? Uh-huh. I guess that's the same thing. Emperor, the An emperor has an empire? Yeah, there's the emperor's new clothes. Then there's a dynasty. What the hell is that? Ah, that was the Patriots at one point. I know, but I think it goes back to China. They had a TV show, China Dynasty. Dynasty. Mm. I know China's like ducks. China duck. Mighty ducks? <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, they eat duck. Beijing duck. Isn't that Peking. Chinese? Peking. Peking yeah. duck. Oh. Duck Larange, French. Peking Subban. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, but any jizz. So she says, "I'll take the aisle," and I go, "No, I'm the aisle." And she goes, "Well, I don't want to sit in the window. I want. I'd like the aisle." And I wow. go, "Well, the aisle's not available. You can have the window." And then the lady, the flight attendant, it's a full flight. So the flight attendant goes, "What's going on here, sugar?" Or something like yeah. that. Like throws some attitude. Oh, she's my a way. Reuben. Yeah, and I go, I go, hey, geez, I just panicked. I go, all right, take the middle, you dumb bitch. And I just yeah. shoved her in the middle. And then Sarah and I are just looking at each other like, all right. So she preferred the middle over the window. See, she she bluffed and lost. I think so. Yeah. She tried to negotiate, but she bluffed. So she she took the middle, 
And uh, it was weird. So I'm like, we uh, Sarah and I were holding hands across her face. Yeah, and, uh, well, you, you screwed the pooch there, China. Yeah, and Sarah slept on her shoulder. And it was very strange. I've never heard anybody turn down a window for a middle. That's cuckoo bananas. But she thought she was getting the aisle. She had another thing coming. Yeah, Emerald Isle. Hey, hey, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Liquid IV. Whether you're at the gym, beach, or sweat lodge, anywhere you need to hydrate, make sure you bring Liquid IV. I love this stuff. I take one every day. You know, I uh, I need to hydrate. We all need to hydrate. I like the strawberry. Goes right in the water. Mix her up. Tastes great. Feels great. Hydrate. We got watermelon, lemon lime, strawberry, pina colada. One stick of liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone. Made with premium ingredients, liquid IV is vegan, non-GMO, free of gluten, dairy, and soy. And they're supporting frontline workers to stay healthy. Liquid IV is donated to hospitals, EMS, food banks, veterans, and active military. Over 19 million servings donated so far. Holy hell, these guys are cooking. And just for you gays, grab Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code TUESDAYS at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you use promo code TUESDAYS at liquidiv.com. Experience better hydration today at liquidiv.com, promo code TUESDAYS. Well said. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Indochino. Whether it's a pandemic delayed wedding or a rescheduled reunion, now is the time to dress your best. From weddings to weekends out in the town, it's always the right time to dress to impress, especially in clothes that fit you perfectly. Indochino makes high quality custom fitted suits, shirts, and casual wear, all at a surprisingly affordable price. You can customize everything from suits and shirts to chinos and bomber jackets at prices more affordable than you might expect. I love this stuff. They sent us a couple pairs. I'm wearing a pair right now underneath my jeans. It's all I wear is Indochino. They offer complete custom-filled suits, shirts, casual wear, and more at surprisingly affordable prices. I think I already said that. Every piece is made to your exact measurements, and you can customize every detail all online. That's nice. You don't have to leave your house for this stuff. Choose everything about your suit, including the fabric, lapel, monogram, and statement linings. Linings. Oh, I screwed up. That's all right, though. Linen or linings. Whatever you want, it's all your choice. You can create a suit that fits you and your style perfectly. The best part, Indochino's suits start from just $4.29 and shirts at $79 with all customizations included. This season, dress to impress on every occasion with Indochino. Get $50 off any purchase of $3.99 or more by using promo code TUESDAYS at Indochino.com. That's $50 off a purchase of $3.99 or more at I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O.com. Promo code TUESDAYS. Sing it, sister. Hey, hey, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Fume. All right. Fume is a safe way to quit smoking. Handcrafted Fume's 100% Canadian maple inhaler is made to comfortably replace the hand-to-mouth habit. Simply insert one of their non-addictive flavored cores. Cores come in dozens of flavors like peppermint, lemon berry, bliss. Mm. Yeah, you got to get on this stuff. Smoking's ugly. It's a bad habit. You got to kick it. Get Fume and look cool doing it. I love this stuff. Tastes great. Feels great. It's aromatherapy in an inhaler. There's no smoke, no vape, and no nicotine to worry about. Even if you're trying to quit smoking fumes, core cores can help with relaxation, energy, and more. Whether you are a smoker or ex-smoker who still struggles with the cravings, fume is perfect tool for you. It's time to create positive habits and quit naturally with fume, and we're here to make it easier. Right now, if you head to breathefume.com slash Tuesdays and use promo code Tuesdays, you're going to save 10% off your first order. You're going to save on cigarettes you aren't buying and save on your initial purchase of Fume. That's 10% off your entire order when you head to B-R-E-A-T-H-E-F-U-M.com slash Tuesdays and use code Tuesdays. Get Fume today! <laughs> Running on fume. Uh, let me let me run this by you there, sloppy Jew. Please. So, 
I got hit up before San Diego, and this L.A. production company goes, we got a, sh- a game show idea. We think uh, Mark would be a good host. Mm-hmm. Could we shoot a sizzle while he's uh, in San Diego? We'll come down from L.A., shoot the whole thing, wrap it up before his shows, and head back to Tinseltown. Nice. I said, great, great. They go, the whole thing will take three hours. We'll pick you up. We'll buy you lunch, yada, yada. We worked on the script a little together. I put some jokes in it. These guys are pros. They got a good list of bullshit they've done. They come out there and they go, it's grips and you know lights and cameras and all this action. And they go, we just want to add one thing while we're here. Hmm. And I go, eh, you know, I try to be a, an open coffin. Yeah, lay it on me. And they go, bless you. <laughs> and they go, uh, can we get a scene of you getting naked what? and running into the ocean? Hmm. And I was like, that, they're like, that's going to be the big button. And look, I'm a fun, freewheeling country girl. I got uh, I got a fun attitude. I'm down. I'm open-minded. But nudity is not my cup of jizz. Really? Yeah. Is it a dick? I, don't, I got a weird sack. I got crazy pubes. I got a, a dick with a mole on it. I assume they blur the dick and balls. Well, they'll like blur. Game show. But okay. I'm just, I'm with a bunch of mooks out here, uh, you understand. know? The crew has to see it. Can't they give you a, 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 a nude thing? They give you a, an underwear that's nude colored. So we that's had. What they do in the movies. They have that. And that was one of the gags. And that was in the script. So we got the, the beige, what do you call it? Skin tone nude. panty. Nude panty. <laughs> And I, I drop trow in the middle of the town square, and it's a big, you know, it's a big uh, laugh. But they go, if we can get you in that ocean, though, that would be better. And I was like, well, I'll do the the nude thing in the ocean, like the the panty. Uh-huh. And they go, nah, we want butt, because hmm. butt thong? is funny. And then, and then the crew has that footage forever. I know. What about a nude thong? No crack. Yeah, you ruined the crack. I see the crack. Yeah, black don't crack. So I go, all right, I'll do it. And then the guy goes, okay, here's what's going to, because the show is about your biggest fears. So they're like, you're, we're going to make up that your biggest fear is nudity and getting in the ocean. And I'm like, well, actually, I am scared of that. And they're like, so you're going to overcome it. That's the big ending. But you're going to overcome it with another guy. What? So what the hell is this show? I'm blowing over a lot here, but. Uh, I mean. So I'm like, okay, who's the other guy? He's this hot gay guy with a huge dong. What? <laughs> what? Huge. So we was have this to a hold... prank on you? Uh, maybe. <laughs> that's oh my, my biggest God. fear. We have to hold hands. I'm homophobic. I'm holding hands with a naked gay that's, guy. I'm naked. That's where you saw Tim Dillon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm holding hands with this guy. This is the first day I get to San Diego. I, I fly there and we shoot this. And I'm holding hands with this guy. I'm naked. It's cold and windy on this nude beach. My dick's the size of an acorn. My sack's the size of Gibraltar. Oh, my God. And I'm holding hands with this well-hung homosexual. Sandy Gago. Yes. And uh, Sandy Hook for me. I was freaking out. But I'm holding hands with this guy, and I, I go, all right, let's just fucking do it. I felt like, a, you know, those women you see in the 50s who are like, they're like, okay, get naked. And they're like, woo <laughs> you know, I felt like what? that. Women from the fifties. Well, you know, they, they, they have these stag films where these women get naked because they have to. You know, the from sex the traffic. I don't know the old days. Okay, nineties. I'm not familiar, but it sounds hot. Well, send me a link. I'll send you a link, <laughs> please. But uh, you know, those women who get naked against their will. Either way, that was me. And exploited. here's exploited. I felt exploited. An exploitation. I felt exploitation. Exploitation. Right. So I'm holding hands with this guy, and I'm like, all right, let's get it going here. You know, it's like, oh, i got to change the lens. Whoop, new battery. And I'm like, come on, I'm naked here. i got a seagull nipping at my sack here. <laughs> so I, uh, I'm like, all right, here we go. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. They go, all right, roll film. Roll sound. Sound speeding. Sound speeding. And we're about 10 yards out from the ocean, and we start running. And then he goes, now Jump. So we have to both jump in unison, and that's the end, you know? Oh, God. And we we do it, and I run backwards to the crew, because I don't want my dong on film, you know? Sure. So I run backwards to the crew. This guy's just waddling, you know? He's fucking <laughs> right. feeling good. He's confident. He's doing cartwheels. And they go, we got to take it again. We must have done it 11 times. Oh, my God. It was God. the longest shoot of my life. They kept missing it. They're like, the jump was off. You hit a wave, a seagull shit in my eye, whatever it is. Now, is there a fluffer? Does anyone fluff you? I was doing my own fluffing. I was up there in front of the water oh, God. jerking it. canceled Next for that. Yeah, I know, right? I was pulling a, a Fred Willard over there, and uh, 
It's all on film. They got everything. We finally got it. And I went home crying. Wow, Jesus. Yeah. So keep a lookout for that sizzle, folks. It's just a sizzle. I know. I know. Imagine <laughs> what the show is going to be. I'm going to end up blowing a black guy in an alley. Oh That's going to be my God. fear. Well, I'd tune in for that. I'd get on the Patreon or whatever. But Yeah. Damn. I have photos. I'll put the photos on the Patreon. I have photos of me butt naked on a beach. That's scary. And by the way, you said you walked back. I would shuffle sideways. I'm more self-conscious about my ass. It's got acne. There's poo uh, on it. Don't you feel like there's always a shit swipe across your ass cheek? Always. And then there's one of these dangling out of it. Exactly. You know? Yeah. I know. I got an inside-out asshole. I mean, there's pimples. And not, not mentioned the other day I was looking at my ass. I got the, the dimple. I got you like got cottage cellulite? cheese. Yeah. Really? I got a cottage cheese, acne. Comedy club ass. Right. right. It's disgusting. You might, have to, might have to do some dips. I, I, I dip squats. occasionally. I squat, I dip, but right. uh, I think it's too many brownies and chocolate chip cookies at Starbucks. Goes right to the ass. Goes I right guess to the so. cheek. But I, and also, I feel like a fucking weirdo doing butt exercises. I do too. What am I? I I'm uh, squatting? Yeah, I can't do it. Am I an Instagram influencer model? You know, it, it's silly. And then I've heard women say, I hate a guy with a big ass. Yeah, I don't, I don't get I, I don't understand. All the stuff that women do, I'm like, you're not doing it for us, right? The, the eye, I'm doing a bit about this on stage, these eyelash extensions. I'm like, nobody asked you to do that. No, they no. They got eyelashes out to here, like fucking Minnie Mouse. And then I the know. butt lift, that too. I'm like, yeah. it just looks like a big bubble thing. I'm right. like, you don't need to do that. <laughs> I agree. And then they get mad at us. They're like, we have to do this because of men and men's society, and they run everything. I'm like... We didn't. We didn't ask for the pencil thin eyebrow or the, the weird line around the lips. No, they don't need any of that. No, no. All you need to do is shut the fuck up. Oh, oh okay, babe. Get back in Yo, the kitchen, get hey. Babe. Yo. All right, All right. There, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just blow me and make me a, a sandwich. sandwich. Hello. Hey, hey, little Miss Muffin. By Stop the way, talking. nobody's ever made me a sandwich in my life. The last sandwich that was made for me was my mother in fifth grade. You want me to make you a sandwich? I'll make you a sandwich. <laughs> I'd love for you to make me a I'll sandwich. I'll make you a sandwich. I'm pretty particular. <laughs> peanut butter and jelly, more peanut butter than jelly. Well, that's one thing I never got is my friend is a stay-at-home dad. You know, he's uh, one of these queefs. And uh, the wife makes a big boatload of cheese at the office. And he's like, I feel like I got to make all the dinners, take care of the kids, do the laundry, because she's doing that. At, at the office making the, the the moolah, so I come home and uh, I clean up the house and do the the yard work and whatever, and I'm like, yeah, that's fair. So is it? Why isn't it fair the other way? Hmm. I, I think, think it's it is fair. This, I think it is too, but there's a little stigma. Hmm. You know, if you go, hey, honey, I, I worked all day. Where's the dinner? People are like, whoa, whoa, what are you a misogynist? You're like, well, no, I'm just I'd like an equal life. Well, I think you got to work it out as long as there's communication. As long as you say, hey, you make a sandwich and blow me, you fucking dipshit, I think, go. I think you're good. All right, all and right. If she doesn't, you hit her. That's fine. That's I the think key. if there's no conversation, you just expect it, that's right, where it's bad. Right, right, I right. I think. I don't know. I'm yeah, not a, you got to communicate before you hit. I'm not a marriage counselor. Sure. All right, well, I basically blew my whole while, but I have one little nugget I'm saving. Hit me a nug or a hold on. I got, no, you I got go, a you go. I've here. been naked on the beach. I've been uh, on a red eye. Well, let 45 me, in. Let me tell you a little bit about um, Fort Worth. But I went down to Hyenas and uh, good weekend. I work, you know CJ Landry. You know him. You ever work with him? His Chicago. Name, his name sounds so familiar. Boston. I think he's Dallas. Oh, all right. Maybe I know CJ. There's CJ a lot of Landry. there's a couple CJs out there. Funny guy. Isn't it funny how some letters go together? CJ. Anything with a J. TJ works. CJ. RJ. RJ. AJ. AJ. BJ. Hmm. KJ. Kevin Johnson. But you don't hear a lot of I'm KJ Stevenson. No, no. J is good. But like then there's DD Ramon. Hmm. But you never have like a KL. KL's bad. Uh, KLM. What's that, Delta? I think they're associated. Uh huh. Or is that radio? KLM radio? Maybe that's something. WKLM. WKLM. CD, that's no, no CD Lamb. There's, I guess you could combine a lot of letters. Mm -hmm. It's really you got to make it work. Yes, you F have to be the right guy. Yeah, CK didn't work before Louis. Exactly. FF is no good. FF, FF is FF bad. Johnson, mm -hmm. full frontal. I've been there. <laughs> right. Um, but anyways, I work with him and Zach Webb. Sweet guys. Zach Webb does a joke. He goes, "Hey, I got my name Zach Webb. It's short for Zachary Webbery." Well, that's fun. That's fun. That's pretty cute. I like it. But uh, so CJ and then Lauren Jameson came to the guest spot. But let me let me tell you this, and uh, this might be awkward because I think CJ might be a Tuesday. Uh oh. But he comes in. We do the show Friday. Show goes well, and it's not an easy room. And he's murdering. 
And then he goes, man, I got this crazy email from this lady. Uh-oh. That was at the show. Just going to change the battery. Keep going. All right. You're good. Oh, you threw me off kilter here. Chuck's changing the battery. Uh-oh, battery change. Isn't that the camera, though? What? Isn't that the camera? It's on you right now, and I switch it back and forth. Oh, I see. Yeah. That's a lot of pressure. Yeah. No oh, no, no two-shot. Well, we do some twos. This is good. Jim, Jim twos. twos. <laughs> um, two's gay. Well, now I'm all thrown off. You got me all wacky. Hold on. We got a, a, a Fort Worth. <laughs> I'm all CJ, wacky. But name. I don't want a close-up. I hate a close-up. Yeah, not, oh, not a good close-up on that mug. I myself. But don't make this a real. All right, so what happened? Back here, right, talk to me. Going. So CJ Landry, he gets the email from a lady, and the lady, and he's like, "Look at this crazy email. This woman's a batshit asshole." And the and the email, he reads the email aloud. Fun word in the in the show in the green room. Oh, in the green in room. in the green room. It's me and Zachary Webbery and CJ Lamb. Yeah, and uh, he's on the Lamb. Someone else. Wait, who's CJ Lamb? Lamp job. He's an athlete, I think. Lamb. I think he's a running back. Or a receiver. Mm. C.J. Landry. Oh, guy. oh, there you go. Different guy. So he's reading the email. C.D. Lamb is an American football wide receiver from yes. the Dallas Cowboys. C.D. Lamb. Yeah, okay, that's him. He's very good. He's electric, one of those guys. So anyways, he's reading the email, and he's like, the lady writes, hey, I, I think you could be better. You got some funny stuff, but my God, you got to work harder. You, you suck. Wow. Or Woman, something. Woman'splaining. And I'm like, wow, what an asshole. We're all like, oh, what a bitch. I can't believe these women. But uh, I'm like, I think she probably <laughs> wants to fuck you. Yeah. And then he's like, and then she writes, P.S., you were better than Joe List, though. Whoa. Nice and I go, twist and turn. I go, what are you doing? <laughs> You're reading this email about how this woman hates me. I don't want to hear that. No, no. Wow. I he mean, probably that, wasn't trying to hurt you, but yeah, that, he could have left that out. I mean, leave a warning, don't read it. I mean, what the fuck? I, I'm getting my own emails here every day that says you suck, you look like garbage, your dick should fall off, you piece of shit, you're I a was hack. Drinking when I wrote that. Uh, but so he just reads the email. And he's like, I know that's what she says. Isn't that crazy? Wow. And I'm like, well, what the fuck? That hurts because not only is he bad, he's getting uh, critiqued. But now you're worse than him. I know everything she said about him. Is now on me, but worse. But worse, yes. You stink. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it just hit me. I sat there. I almost cried. Yeah. Now, did you have to do a show after that, or were you done? I had two shows after oh. that. And, of course, he's up there shucking and jiving and killing. Of I'm course. going, oh, well, they all think he's better than me. i, I got to kill myself. So, anyways, it was the worst weekend of my life. I'll Damn. never talk to the guy again. But um, Yeah, maybe he does this. Maybe he knows this, this lady, and then he sends uh, an email, and he goes, hey, how about this, headliner? He might have wrote the email. That's I, I have saying. no idea. Oh, yeah. I see. It's a little ploy. Uh, but no, he's a great guy. Fucking hilarious and uh, great weekend. But uh, evidently, I sucked. But what Apparently. can you do? Now let me ask you this one, please. Put it in my ass. See if I queef. So I, we go to Aruba. So I go straight from Fort Worth to Aruba. Brutal flight, but five a.m. flight from ah. Fort Worth to Atlanta. But I got the Delta Lounge now. Me too. Oh, it's amazing. It's the best. I was a United Lounge guy. Yeah. <laughs> Piss Please. on your lounge, United Delta. It's it's eucalyptus. There's a, there's a Yanni playing. There's all kinds of food. Open bar. Killer. Forget about it. I bumped into Mateo Lane over there. Speaking Woo-wee. of hot gays. Oh, that's a hot gay. That's a sexy, sexy homosexual. Sweet guy. Funny guy. Great glad, body. Glad I wasn't on the beach with him. So let me ask you this. I go, I get to Aruba, and then all the pilots, the pilot is in the audience, all the pilots stay at the same hotel, the Holiday Inn in ah, Aruba. They can kick them up a notch, you'd think. Well, I think it's, you know, they're corporations. That's how they get on top, by paying everybody the bottom. I see. So I get there, and there's two pilots on the elevator with me, Delta pilots. I'm a Delta boy, and it's like kind of a, a shorter, older gay man and a taller, whatever, straight guy, I guess. He wasn't really talking. Sure. But the guy's like, we'll meet on the beach. We'll meet there in a half hour. It'll be great. And I was thinking about this as a pilot. It must suck because you just get stuck with a guy in the cockpit you don't know. Is for that like right? a four, five, six hour flight. It sucks if you don't know the guy. Interesting. But maybe it's fun. Like, or you don't like the guy, I mean. Yeah. It could that could be a thing, but maybe it's fun. Like you show up to a feature weekend and your feature's killer. Yeah. But what if you get a pilot who's reading emails about what a bad pilot you are? That's a good point. You don't want to hack pilots. <laughs> so anyway, so they're on the thing and I'm like, oh, that's fun to see the pilots behind the scenes. And now I know they get to stay in Aruba. How fun to go fly your plane, and then you go out and swim or whatever. Yeah. So I go to the beach bar. I meet Sarah. They were having some burgers, some fish. We're eating each other out. The pilot, just like three hours later, I see the little gay pilot. He comes up to the bar, and he's like, 
Hey, Hank. Let me get another beer. Let me get a sea breeze. And he's in a bathing suit. I can see his bare feet, his nipples. He's shirtless. What? The shirtless pilot? I don't like the sound of that. I, that's what I'm saying. And I'm he's like, hammered. This is so weird. I'm like, if this guy's my pilot, I'm going to dive off the plane. Wow. And he's got, like a, he's got like a bay breeze. It's bright blue. There's fruit on it, a straw sticking out. And he's like got his foot up on the, uh, the stool. And I'm just looking at his bare foot, toenails, and nipples. Toenails and nipples of a pilot. You're a Delta man. Get back to work. Put with, a suit on. With the sea breeze. He's like, <laughs> oh, He's no. like shit house. Wow. That's weird, right? That's, that's weird. That's a job. I don't want to see their nipples. No, no. It's like seeing a fireman uh, blowing a guy. Well, that I've seen. My uncle's a fireman. Ah, yeah. Good point. <laughs> that's how he got in the academy. Send me the video. <laughs> but, um, He's got to work the pole. But some job you can see. Uh, a bartender's nipples, your therapist's nipples you like to see. But a pilot, uh, no. there's just something about it. No, I want them shirt tucked in, hair cut, you know, upright. Cap. Cap. Yeah, the whole thing. Shiny shoe. They, got, they all got that same black luggage with the wings and the, the waitress, the stewardess knows them. Right. Yeah, you want a little, uh, a little clean cut with a yes. pilot. Fly <laughs> right. Very strange. You got to straighten up and fly right. He was he was wacky and flying wrong. Yeah, and now is he going to be hung over for the flight home? Like, oh, hey, folks, we're going to take this thing up to twenty eight hundred feet. Give me that Advil. Yeah, it was it was weird. It was a weird thing to know these. Pi- it's like when you see a teacher at the grocery That's store. That's what it is. Yeah, you see the pilot at the bar. It's just it's no good. No good. I don't like it. But, but anyways, apparently he's allowed to do that. Uh, and how about this? This is fun. You're a New Englander, Chuck. I was uh, yesterday. You know, Aruba has one professional athlete, Xander Bogarts, for the Boston Red Sox from is Aruba. Right? I think there might be one other baseball player ever, but he's the Aruban guy. Is baseball the most diverse sport of the four major league sports? I would say by far. Yeah, well, MMA might be up there. Well, if you're adding MMA, then it's that's got of, the most international. Yeah, but Russian, if you're talking the four team sports, I All would right. say without question. Yeah, they got a million South Americans over there. Well, you got Asian, well, more uh, Dominican. You got the Dominicans. Yep. A couple Cubans. It's like every once in a while there's a Venezuela. I'll throw a Japanese cat in there every a lot now of, and then. A lot of Japanese, some Korean now. Aha. Uh-huh. You got a Canadian occasionally. But hockey also. Hockey, you got Finland, you got oh, Russia, you got a lot of Canada, a lot of the States. Yeah, a lot of the whites. Some Swedes. Yes. A couple Norway. Uh-huh. Uh, Stiff hockey. There's a couple Germans, Dreisaitl. There you go. A couple others. So maybe hockey. Dreidel, dreidel. Yeah, it's interesting. All right, so. It's weird how hockey only is only like 10 countries playing hockey. The Czech Republic, Finland, Sweden, Russia. Yeah, hockey's not that big, but then it is big. Yeah. It's huge, but it's like you know, England they're not playing hockey. You know, France they're not really playing hockey. Yeah, how did England miss out on hockey? They got cold weather. They got white people. It seems like a shoe in. That's interesting. I don't know. Well, I don't know if they have as much ice though, because they're in the um, the the uh, what do you call that Gulf Stream? Like it doesn't get super snowy in in England. Maybe that's what it is. They never had the ponds yeah, freeze over. Exactly. I thought it snowed there. Eh, maybe I'm I think big. it snows, but I don't think it snows a lot because that's right. why it's warm up there. Ah, all in right. the, uh, in the, not that it's warm, but it's it's not that freezing. What about Greenland? They're all ice. And Iceland. But Greenland, I think, is all ice, but I don't think there's a lot of people there. I'll give that a goog on the uh, the Greenland population. I think it's small. All I don't right. play much hockey. Call in if you know about the Greenland hockey. You never hockey. meet anyone green, greenish. Greenish? Greenlandian. Yeah, what's up with that? Greenlandian? Uh, Population of Greenland is fifty six thousand. Wow, that's a that's country. Insane. That's my family's that size. Yeah, that's banana. That's like I the told you. I yeah, I mean that's crazy. Fifty six thousand. That's more than people. Uh, Yankee Stadium has fifty eight thousand. Wow, or some shit. greeny. I told you, no one's living there. There Must be abundance of rape. I bet. Oh yeah. Because what is it? Two cops. I know, right. The proper name for them is is basically like Eskimos. So the like whoa, now Eskimos whoa, whoa. is out. So it's Inuit or K A L A A L L I T K L M. I feel like I feel like Inuit's not going to last long. That that feels uh, pretty. Yeah. Nobody cares about Inuit. He's a fucking Inuit. Yeah, yeah. It sounds worse than Eskimo. Absolutely. The hard yeah. consonant makes it bad. It's kind of like server Inuit. and waiter. Like, hey, don't say waiter. Say server. Like, server sounds worse. You're serving me. You're a servant. Good point. I have Serve a point. The servants. Um, Protect and servant. But yeah, 
So, all right. So you got a, a baseball thing. What was I saying? Oh, but anyway, Xander Bogarts, he's the star of the Red Sox. He's from Aruba. So when you're in Aruba, I'm a Red Sox guy. So I'm like, take me by his house. Oh. Where does he live? Where did he grow up? What's yes. it like? So yesterday, we're in line. It takes three hours to get through customs and everything at Aruba. Ah. So we're in the, uh, the, the line for customs. And I look over, and I, you know how you like, your, your eye is like a camera in a film. I just see a big Boston Red Sox duffel bag. Oh, come on. And I pan up the duffel, and there's just this big uh. specimen. And I look, that's him. That's Bogart. I try to keep it quiet. It's I like was a like, make a wish. And he's, he's in the, um, the global entry because he's like a superstar. Sure. So we're all in the line like assholes. And I see him. He's with another guy who's wearing a, he's got a Braves. You know, uh, bag. Yeah, little smaller guy. I didn't recognize him. But I guess he plays for the Braves, and uh, he's got the bag. Oh, so I can't. Oh, up. I'm like, that's oh, him, and he and he's huge, and he's buff, and he's black. I wanted my wife to fuck him in front of sure, me for a couple sure. bucks. Sounds good to me. So I look at him, and he goes to the global entry, and I'm like, I know that's him. That's definitely him. And Sarah's like, Are you sure? And I'm like, She doesn't even know who he is. But I'm like pushing her in the bushes, and I'm like looking around to see if anyone else recognizes him. Nobody does. He walks through, and one guy who's on the other side waiting. I don't think he was detained or something. Uh-oh. He gave him the fist bump and grabs a selfie, and I'm like, that confirms that that's him. Oh. And he see him, and he's got the diamond earring, and he's just a physical spec. Oh, big hunk of man. Yeah, and it was exciting. So I'm texting Ray, and Ray, of course, is like, get a photo. Get him to do an ad for the show. Yes. Say Aruba Ray's. Tell him about the gig. He'll open. He'll host. <laughs> and I'm like, I was like, he can't. He already walked away, and he's like, leave the line. I'm telling you, go find him. I couldn't do it. Then I looked for him, but he's not in with the schlubs. It's like oh, Ellis Island up there. He yeah. can't be. He's probably in the, the VIP section, the batter's box, whatever. Oh, yeah, the dugout. It'd be great if he threw you the jersey like a little kid, like Refrigerator Perry. I know, and you want to be like, I'm from Boston, but everybody in Aruba is from Massachusetts, ah. so everyone's just whatever. But it felt good, and you want to be like, guys, that's him. Yeah. Look at that. And I got the Sox jersey. I just happened to be wearing it, so I wanted to be like, hey, look at this. But he right. doesn't give a shit. Well, that's nice. You got you caught him. I caught him. I saw him. It's exciting. But then it's funny because you're like, I could see him. But then I've been to a million games. You can see him in uniform playing. But somehow right. seeing the guy outside of the ballpark means more to you. Of course. It's like seeing a pilot at the bar. It means more. That's right. I wish I saw his nipples. Right. Well, and one day we'll catch a training video or something. Yeah, I could probably see his nipples. I bet he's done an ad for underwear. Or- Pull him up. Sheath. Uh, but wait, uh, I wanted to say one thing. Oh, I lost it. Shit. Uh, the Bogarts, Aruba, Aruba, Global Entry, Greenland, Ice Hockey, 53,000. Once you said your wife would, would fuck him, I lost it. I picked Duffel bag. Yeah. Uh, now I'm picturing Sarah blowing his. Bogarts. Bogarts ass. All right. Fuck I'm it. free. It's gone. Well, we got to wrap it up anyways. Yeah, you saw him. That's nice. Yeah. I can't believe you saw the one celebrity on the island. That's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. Good for you. Yeah, pretty cool. But, I mean, it's a small island. I mean, there's probably oh. less people than Greenland. I got it back. What is it about Massachusetts? Everywhere I go, I go to Key West. I was just in St. Thomas in the Virgin Isle. You're in Aruba. It's all mass people. The well, whole strip. Well, Aruba is the most insane. It's crazy. We were on the beach. It just spread like wildfire. Like there was everybody within. You could see. It's like the South Shore South down there. Uh huh. But Massachusetts is so cold. It's yeah. so bitter and it's so dense. There's so many people yes. in New England. Also, everybody says, I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, but you got to factor in Rhode Island, Connecticut, uh-huh. a lot of Connecticut, New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine, Massachusetts. It's a ton of people, and it's so cold and shitty there. And JetBlue flies direct to all those islands and to Aruba. Uh-huh. And it spreads also, it's all big families. Right. Everyone, go, everyone in Massachusetts is like a, a 27 person family. So totally. everyone goes, We're all going down there, lock, stock, and barrel. And so everybody's down there. there a lot you of go. New Yorkers in Aruba too. It's everyone's from New York, New Jersey, or Massachusetts. One hundred percent of the people. All right. You never see a person in Aruba who's like, "I'm from Wisconsin." Never, never. It's and wild. they need it too. Yeah, but I think maybe they go to maybe they go California to or Arizona or some yeah, shit. Who the know. hell knows? Snowbirds. Yep. They call them. But all right, we got to wrap this puppy up with a bow here. Uh, where are you going to be there, Fatty? Well, I got all the big dates coming up. Next week, I'm doing another Astoria, Grove 34, uh, I think next Monday. Um, and uh, Boston, uh, Side Splitters, March 24th to the 26th, Side Splitters, Tampa. Then uh, the big one, Laugh Boston. That one, my whole life is on the line. I will shoot myself if it doesn't sell out. April 14th through the 16th, Patriots Day weekend. We're back, baby. Baseball's happening. The marathon's happening. I'll be at the marathon. I'll be at the ball game. I'll be at Laugh Boston. Come say hello. 
Then uh, the weekend after that's Buffalo, April 21st to the 23rd. Cap City, May 5th through the 7th. The weekend after that is Raleigh. I'm doing that one-nighter you did. Wednesday, Greenville, I think. It's like a rock club. They sent me photos of you doing it. Oh, yeah, it's all right. That's how they get me. <laughs> They're like, here's Mark doing yeah, it. Yeah, have fun there. Meanwhile, you do every fucking gig on Earth. Yeah. I'm like, I want to send him back a photo of you at an arcade in front of three people <laughs> in a middle seat going, he's also sitting in the middle seat. You yeah. want me to sit in the middle seat? It might be the middle seat of shows. But anyway, so I'll be in Greenville, come to that show, then uh, good nights and a ton of other shit coming up. April 29th is when I'm going to release the special. Ooh-wee. That's going to be huge. April 29th. Comedy special. You heard it here first, folks. It's going to be on my YouTube. Go subscribe. This is the one. This is going to really take it off, That's baby. It. I saw it live. It's a humdinger. It's lunch. It's lights out. It was killer. So uh, you're going to really love it. And tune in for the sign alone. The sign was 18 grand. Uh, so. at Venmo me. PayPal, yes. Venmo, five, six bucks, eight bucks, yeah. 300 bucks if you could because the sign cost me 48000 I know. It's in a landfill in Staten Island right now. I don't know where the hell it is. I, I tried to lug it home. I could have bought Greenland for the price I paid for this thing. And join the <laughs> Patreon, for God's sake. Yes. We got a lot of stuff cooking. Something new every week at least. I'm you get in that Simpson. Check? Huh? You got that check? I got it on me. <laughs> I'm dying out here. I can't pay my rent. Oh, you're doing fine. Yeah, I'm doing very well. All right. We got a, a funny bone Cincinnati this weekend out in Liberty. It's out there, folks. Liberty. Louisville Liberty. Comedy Club in Kentucky. Dania Beach Improv. Indianapolis Helium. Carolina Theater in Durham with my old pal Sean Murphy. Stand Up Live in Phoenix. Calusa Casino Resort, Magoobies in Baltimore, Addison Improv, one of my favorite rooms in uh, good old Dallas there. Uh, I think we're going to London, too. We should set something up yeah, there. Yeah, I want to do a live gaze. I've been, my agent's working on something. Huntsville, Alabama, uh, doing some shows with Burt Kreischer. We're going back to Red Rocks, Irvine Improv, Houston Improv, Comedy Off-Broadway in Lexington, San Antonio. I'm all over Texas. Jesus Christ. West Palm Beach and Florida. Richmond Funny Bone. A lot of great stuff. We got a theater tour cooking all over the road. The Vic in Chicago. Cleveland. The Agora Theater. Durham. uh, Minneapolis. uh, Red Bank. Red Bank, New Jersey. Thank you. That's where I'm moving. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm going to buy a house there. I'll come see you. I'll believe it when Basie, I see it. The Mount Basie. Count Basie. Count Basie. Yeah. I'm moving right in there. Lock, stock, and barrel. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'll be there. But, all right. We love you. Queef it up. Praise Allah. Thank you, gang. We'll see you in hell. You're gonna, uh, I was just in Tampa. You're going to have a BT. He runs it with a well old machine. Oh, I love BT. I love Tampa. Good idea. Comedy. Thank you. Got it. <laughs>